green stripe electric car that's in our space. That that's not it's not on. I'm Mike. And I'm Danny. And this is Petrol Revolt. Welcome back to Petrol Revolt and another series. In this episode, we've not got two wheels, we've not got four wheels. That can only mean we've got three and that can only mean the Morgan three-wheeler. Fortunately, we're blessed with beautiful sunshine to review this car because just taking a look around the Morgan, then you suddenly realize that it's not the most practical vehicle on the road. Now, it certainly looks good fun to drive and there's a lot of reviews already done commenting on just how fun and what a hoot this car is to drive. On paper though, it's got some good specs. It weighs in at just 550 kilograms. The two liter S and S motor punches out around about 85 brake horsepower. It does at naught to 60 in around six seconds. And if you're brave enough, it's reported to top out at 115 mile an hour. So I've seen you've been eyeing this car up this morning, Danny, with, I'm not sure if they're concerning looks or, uh, appreciative looks you know when we dragged you here to review some cars and bikes you it wasn't just the exotic stuff you know we've got some real quirky stuff uh to be honest like you you look at it and it's it's a work of art really isn't it it's something beautiful to look at but it's not your typical car you know you wouldn't want to you wouldn't want to go particularly fast in it but it's it certainly catches people's eyes and and one of the first things that caught my eye was obviously the SNS motor, um, but it looks um, to me it looks like a Harley Davidson motor, um, but obviously it's not. An SNS in the past have done a lot of performance parts for for Harleys and stuff like that, so that's the first thing what what caught my eye. Um, and the other thing what caught my eye was obviously the seat's not adjustable, um, so with my little legs I'm going to struggle to. <laughs> I'm going to struggle to reach the pedals, but you have assured me that, that you can adjust the pedals to, to bring them back closer to me. So uh, I'm a little bit happier with that now, but just looking forward to getting out and it, having a drive of it, putting some sun cream on. I think you need some sun cream on your head as well. <laughs> and um, just, just looking forward to having a go in it. Yeah, there's no doubt we're going to have some fun in it. I uh, can't wait to take it for a drive, especially around these country roads. I'm just a little bit concerned at these tyres, you know, this heritage style tread block doesn't really inspire me with confidence that it's going to be the most grippiest. Uh, those brake discs, I think I've seen bigger on a moped. I know, it's like <clears throat> the tyres, they're almost like from the 1950s, aren't they? You know, when you see the old TT, the, you know, the George Formby film, that's like what sort of tyres they had on in that. And um, yeah, like you say, the, the brake discs, um, the calipers, they're not very big on it, but as a fun factor, it, it, it looks good fun. I just like all the detail in like, you know, the, the wrapped exhaust and things like that. I think that looks all, all super cool. So um, I'm just looking, just looking forward to having a go. I've never drove anything like this before. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing what it's like. Yeah, me too. I'm really excited about this. Just a little bit cautious, you know, the supercars that I'm used to driving, you're really cocooned inside the cabin. You've got a car that passes really stringent crash testing. Brakes, tyres, grip, everything is as evolved as it possibly can be. Uh, this, uh, no crash standard, uh, no airbag. You wouldn't want to get rear-ended in it. I'm assuming that it might not have any driver aids on it, but has it got any driver aids? Um, um, and I suppose, where does it drive from? Does it drive from the front or from the rear? Uh, driver aids, uh, it's your eyesight, yeah. That's pretty much uh, the driver aid. Uh, no ABS, no traction control. Uh, obviously, we've got the engine up front. Uh, we've got a Mazda MX-5 gearbox that with a belt, big thick belt, drives the singular rear wheel. It, it, looks, it looks good fun. Um, and maybe just putting that bit of a danger aspect to it might make it even more fun. So join us as we take the Morgan three-wheeler out for a spin around the country roads around here. We've got a track session booked where we'll sample the Morgan on track and we'll also pitch up at Caffeine and Machine, park the Morgan up and no doubt it's going to generate quite a bit of attention. Should we have a look around it then, Danny? Yeah, I do. I like, I like how it's all exposed and I like how the engine's exposed as well. I think it looks mega cool. Yeah, it's, it's pretty loud. Uh, especially from the exhaust, which are really close to 
each year. Yeah, and yeah. then you've got the mechanical noise of the engine, so there's a lot going on. Um, yeah, steering, yeah, you can see all the suspension components moving as you're driving, which is super cool. Uh, there's no power assisted steering yeah, on Yeah, I this. was just about to ask that if there's any power steering. Yeah, most manufacturers tune in the power assisted steering system, the feedback that the driver gets, uh, whereas there's none on this. Um, I should imagine feedback is going to be pretty minimal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, same with the braking as well. Uh, no ABS on this. I should imagine the pedal is just going to feel old fashioned and wooden. Yeah, yeah. When you do start to get uh, a bit of a pace on in it, I mean, it is pretty cool to look down and see all the workings. But then you see that heritage style tire start to move off the rim, and that's like a little bit disconcerting. Uh, and the small amount of driving I've done in it, that is followed by a good amount of understeer. Yeah, you can see everything moving as well, can't you? Whereas in, when you're in a normal car, everything's covered up and you don't know, you don't really think about anything, do you? But when you're driving this, you can see everything moving around and working, I suppose. But what's actually, because the engine's up here, what's actually under here? Uh, this is just a battery and a dry sump oil oh, right. tank uh, for the engine simply un pull those two clips up oh yeah that's the front oh, end off. yeah okay yeah yeah so yeah that's not for you and luggage really not a lot though is there like considering the engines up here and it's very like the engine that's very compact and that's why i suppose it's that light as well because you, you've not got anything here have you well it's only 550 kilograms i mean modern day cars you know, if you think back to mark one golf gti and all cars of that era they were weighing in at uh, 800 900,000 kilogram this is 550 kilogram yeah. we've got no crash cans crash structure airbags any safety features that have crept in over the last few years there's none of that on this car and lightweight is the the benefit of that yeah yeah so if we can't get much luggage in here should we have a look in the in the boot if you can call it a boot um and see what might see how much space we got back there yeah i've just realized i've said we're going to caffeine and machine and i know you've got a soft spot for the dog treats are you trying to eye up where you can fit your bags of dog treats maybe yeah yeah maybe but well i think your dog's going to be out of luck because there ain't much room in there if you pull out that zeus clip yeah. easy as that and then this whole rear section should just lift up oh cool it's got a little hinge on it as well so so here's your emergency toolkit right and that's your that's your driving attire yeah that's my driving hat. I think it looks good. Where are the goggles then? Oh, here we go. This is my style. This is a bit of me. I look the nuts in that, don't I? It's not a bit of me, but I tell you it is a bit. It's a bit of my dad. <laughs> I can see my dad driving around in something like this with one of these hats on. It's not a bit of me, but uh, yeah, I can definitely see my dad doing that. It's quite cool though, isn't it? It's, um, I quite like it actually. I probably look like a bit of a prat in it, but. Let's give it a go. I think I'm going to be a sun, sunglasses I, man. Honestly, I think that really... <laughs> I think that really suits you. <laughs> yeah, that that's a good look on you. Don't you think? Do you think that's a good look? I think that's a mega look on him. Right, now you get to experience the first couple of Morgan quirks, getting into the car and sticking your seatbelt on. I'll let you experience those without any briefs. See how you get on. I'll give it a go. It does. Uh, it doesn't look like your ordinary way of getting into a car, but uh, let's, let's see how let's see how elegant you can do it. Well, yeah, how am I going to do this? Oh, 
bloody hell. <laughs> I'll tell you what, it's a bit difficult getting in here, isn't it? Oh, blood. Don't waste the seatbelt. Hang on. God, even me, I don't, even I need to put my bum up on the side to... That's your first Mor Morgan quirk. You've got to sit on the centre hump there to be able to gain enough room to put the seatbelt buckle in. Well, I've got in and out of this a few times, so I've got over those first couple of Morgan quirks, but the first thing I need to do is give you that. Oh. Now, I'm a little bit wider than you, and to put this seatbelt on, I am going to have to sit up on the middle hump. It's a bit cosy in there. Right, I think you're going to be needing this back, because I don't think we're going to be going far without that. Extra security, theft prevention. But it shakes like a Harley as well. Right, so you ready to take this flying machine out on the road, Danny? Um, I mean, I've never drove anything like this before, so I would prefer to have a little spin around the track on it first, get comfortable in a safe environment and then uh, and then take it out on the oh, road. You want to get acclimatised, right. yeah? I do want to get acclimatised, well, yeah. I'm told this has got an adjustable pedal box, so it's set up for me, I think. Well, I'm going to need it because my, my legs are rather little. I'll let you come around here and do the mechanical stuff because I'm not very good at that sort of stuff. And then uh, we'll get in another go. Oh, I've been sold some Duff Info. Right. It looks like it is an adjustable pedal box, but you can't do the adjustment on the fly. It looks bolted. Right, okay. Um, well, that might be a bit of an issue because I, I won't be able to reach, reach, reach the pedals. And actually, that looks rather a permanent feature bolted in rather than something you can actually undo and adjust. Right. Right, I've got an idea. Booster seat. Booster seat. Yeah, Petrol that was, revolt style. That'll suit me perfect. Right, well, let me get in. Where's that steering wheel gone? Let me get in and uh, we'll give it a go. Let's see if I can get in. Perfect. How's that? Yeah, Press nice and pedal. snug. Yeah, nice and snug. Got quite a bit of foam behind me, so perfect. There you go. Perfect, right. I'm gonna go for a little spin around the track. I'll see you guys later. I can't get it, I can't get it out. I can't get the handbrake off. Put my goggles down. I'm protected from the wind. From the wind, right, I'm gonna build up to it a little bit here because I'm not, I'm not entirely confident in it. The seatbelt's locked on. Seatbelt's locked so I can't move. Right, so obviously it's not the the best of cars to to drive around a track, but let's see uh, sort of what it can do. It's not going to be able to do a huge amount. You have to shift down mega light because of the engine brake on the engine. It's not a, it's not a Harley. So the, yeah, that's better. That's better in second gear. Yeah, you don't. 
do have to be a bit careful. Tell you what, when you get used to it, it's actually driving just down the stairs a lot. I've been looking forward to this. It's my turn to spin a few laps in the Morgan. Danny's left me some tire, so let's go and see what the limits of the grip really is. It's gonna ease us into this session, get the feel of the car around the track. Straight away, we got some quite colossal understeer in that corner. I know because it's an open car and I'm like a meter or so away from the front wheel, I can actually hear the tire ripping itself through the corner. Now when Danny came back in after his track session, I had a look at the tire and it got like sideways cut lines across it. Now normally when you take a car or a bike round the track, get the marbling up effect. Oh, there you can hear it. That tire understeering, scuffing itself through the corner. Which actually makes going round here quite good fun because there's no point understeering the hell out of it. So you might as well just find out where the limit of the car is and then drive the car to its limit, which is really rewarding. I, the other good thing is because it's an open wheeler, you know exactly where you want to put the line through the corners and you can sort of perfectly see the rumble strip and the white lines and you can get it, especially on the right-handers, perfectly on your right tire so you can precisely set your line around the track. I mean, normally we come to this track in super powerful bikes and cars. And to come here in something that the track is actually more suited for, you know, most of the cars and bikes that we come around here in, it's a little bit too short, a little bit too tight, but this circuit actually suits this Morgan. So we've spent enough laps building ourselves into it, time to Unleash those 80 odd horsepower. Oversteer, thank you. into that corner less hot next time. I think I've got the measure of these pretty much. Oh, it doesn't like rapid change of direction. Let's see if we can actually make the corner after the straight. 
more civilised approach. Bit of braking down, turning. Yeah, that's not too bad, not too bad. You will remember she doesn't like rapid change of direction. This just reminds me, when I was a kid, going to Wicksteed Park in a go-kart and having a sense of freedom away from your parents. It's those sort of childlike memories and feelings that this car brings back to you. doesn't like rapid change of direction and understeer at the same time. Yeah, I, th I think my time's done now. I, I think these tyres don't need understeering permanently. A good bit of fun, but the place for this car is on an A or B road, 50 mile an hour. Wind in your hair. Waving to other Morgan owners. Have a trip out in the Dales, the South Downs. Get your picnic blanket out when you're there. cucumber sandwiches, pack it all up, go home and look forward to doing it again all on another day. got the measure of it Danny. I think I feel comfortable enough in this now to uh, take it out on the road. It's not going to be a suicide mission then? I, I can't promise that but I feel I feel confident enough to take it out. Let's take the Morgan out on the road then. Go on let's go. Need my hat on, need my goggles on. Don't worry I won't pull away until you've, uh, you've got your safety equipment on. Tally ho! Visit the website to find out more about the track days and obviously this cool merchandising. You know, we've got some pretty cool stuff.